Um, Jacqueline, would you like to read for us first? Okay. Um, as I said, there are 24 uh, different women that I interviewed um, for the book. And one of these women, she's a, a fellow author as well. Um, she's also a, a counselor, and she talks about how she develops a personal relationship with God. So um, her name is Latanya Mason Summers. And um, the verse and the, the, the name of the story is, Suffer the Little Children to Come Unto Me. Uh, this is a verse from the Bible. Do not be afraid, you will not be put to shame. Do not fear disgrace, you will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth. Isaiah 54, 4. Latanya Mason Summers is a licensed professional counselor and the founding executive director of Life Skills Counseling and Consulting in Charlotte, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Summer has over 15 years of experience aiding adolescents, adults, and families in overcoming various issues including depression, anxiety, grief, loss, abuse, and addictions. She received her bachelor's degree in child psychology and master's in agency counseling from Appalachian State University. In addition, Summers, an ordained minister, is author of the book, Good to Me, a Christian novel. Aside from her for professional life, Summers is also a wife to Nathan Summers and mother. While Summers developed a personal relationship with God as an adult, she traces her belief in Jesus Christ back to her altar call experience at nine years old. Many people become uh, Christians as children. What sets her apart from other children that gave their lives to Christ is that Summers attended church alone that day and crossed the highway to get there. Mm. Living with an abusive mother, she had gone to church that Sunday to get food, but she also realized she was hungry for God. Her childhood was one wrought with pain, instability, and an awareness of adult issues that belied her age. I was born to know what 16-year-old mother my father was in prison shortly after my birth for bank robbery. I was taken from my mother at four years old after I was hospitalized with gonorrhea. I don't remember being sexually abused at four, and what I do remember seems dreamlike, but I clearly remember the day I was hospitalized and nearly dying from the fever gonorrhea caused. I was placed in foster care. I remember two families I was placed with, one white and one black. I remember how awkward I felt going to the grocery store and church with the white family. I remember them being nice, but I felt like I never belonged. Mm -hmm. Then I was moved to a black family. All I remember is going to church with them, and I remember eating peanut butter and syrup sandwiches, which were horrible. Mm -hmm. Then my father's mother came and got me from foster care and adopted me. My grandmother died when I was seven years old, and my mother was first in line to get me back. It's a long story, but she told my paternal aunt, they were the same age, that she was taking me school shopping, and she would bring me back. Well, she never did. Mm -hmm. My aunt had not yet had a chance to transfer my adoption, so I ended up living with my mother, who had by then become an alcoholic and abusive until I could get away from her when I was 12 years old. I remember starting a third grade at a new school while living in my mother's two-door car. I remember spending the night at so many different people's houses. I don't remember why she was so financially unstable. I was nine years old when my mother's boyfriend began molesting me. Mm -hmm. My mother was a party person and she was quick to leave me with him. She thought he was a good person because he bought me gifts and was always willing to take me with him, usually to abandoned houses to molest me. It's strange how I learned the Bible. Before my mother's boyfriend would molest me, he would have me read the Bible and write down scripture. <laughs> to this day, I, don't, I know the Bible backward and forward, and people ask me how I know it so well. I remember that day I went to church by myself. I remember it was cold and sunny. At nine years old, I crossed four lanes to get to the church. There's no telling where my mother was, and as usual, there was probably not any food in the apartment. That's probably why I went to church, hunger. I was late, and I'm sure I had no idea what time the service started. I don't even think I planned to go. I don't remember anything about the service, but I remember walking down the aisle to give my life to Christ. The people there kept looking behind me, expecting an adult to go back with me to answer their questions, but I told them it was just me. I filled out the church membership papers myself with my name and address. I don't recall getting anything to eat, but what I got spiritually was more filling. My mother beat the crap out of me for not being home when she got there. A few weeks later, it was Christmas, and someone came over to our house bearing lots of gifts for me. I got a big Bible picture book. I loved that book. I read all the stories in the Bible book. I learned about Elijah being fed by the ravens and Joseph's coat of many colors. I can still see the pictures in my mind's eye. I got a sketchbook, and I drew pictures out of the book. I was a pretty good artist. My mother felt bad that she was not able to get me presents, but she was also angry that someone else did. 
By the time I was in sixth grade, I had attended at least four elementary schools. I believe I was 11 years old when I wrote a note to the, to the neighbor about my mother's boyfriend molesting me. That neighbor told my mom. I had already told her she didn't believe me. The day he left, he made sure I saw him take his finger and run it across the neck of a photo hanging on the wall. I thought it was a gesture to let me know he was coming back to kill me. My mother was angry at me when she put him out, of, put him out as if it was my fault. She was also physically abusive beyond words. My hospital records had to be sick. I was always in the ER needing something, stitches in the lip, in the head or lip from where she had thrown something at me, or a wound kit from burns in the iron or curlers. I was beaten with broomstick handles, threatened with knives and guns, and called all kinds of names, all before I left at age 12. I thought she was going to kill me, so I went to a neighbor's house and called for child protective services to tell them about a friend whose mother was beating her. The operator asked me how come I knew so much about my friend, and I said, the friend is me. They were at the house in less than an hour. Mm -hmm. My childhood influenced me in many ways. At 12 years old, I learned the statistics of an abused person. According to statistics, I was supposed to grow up to be an abuser, drop out of school, be on drugs, be a teenage mother, etc. And I set out to prove them wrong. I went on all levels. As a therapist, I help others win too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.